Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay Taylor and today we're going to be taking a further look at the Harley Benson MB5 5 string bass guitar. Now this video is kind of an unofficial part two to the first mini review and unboxing video that I did not too long ago. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it up down below in the video description for you. So if you want to, you can go ahead and watch that video first and then come back and watch this video. Or you can watch this video and go back and watch that video or whatever. Now since I released that first video, I have had some alone time, some quality time with this guitar. Yeah, that didn't sound weird. And I didn't plan on making any other videos about this guitar until I came to restring it. And that's when I discovered some things that I thought were quite interesting and I thought I should let you guys know about just in case you're planning on purchasing one of these yourself. So just this morning, I finally got around to restringing this guitar. I removed the stock strings that came with this guitar and I replaced them with my favorite brand, Diodario. These ones to be precise. And I was going to film the entire string changing process, but then I thought to myself that might be kind of boring even if I sped it up, and decided against it. But after doing that string change, I'm regretting it and I wish I had recorded the entire process. And this is why. When I came to change the strings on this guitar, that's when a lot of the problems started to surface. And that's when I realized that there's a reason these guitars get sold as cheaply as they do. Now, as I've stated before, Harley Benson have been given a lot of praise for the guitars that they make, at least from what I've seen anyway. They make affordable guitars that are somewhat decent, playable, reliable, and blah, 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 blah. They make affordable guitars. And now I know you really do get what you pay for. What do I mean by that? Now, the first problem that I discovered whilst changing the strings on this guitar was the low B string. Changing the low B string on this guitar was a royal pain in the ass. Why was it a royal pain in the ass? Well, so I'm just trying to change the guitar strings on the bass here. And uh, yeah, this, this is a bit of a design flaw, at least in my opinion. My God, is this annoying. This does not come out very easy. This is inconvenient. Now I did eventually get the B string released and off of the guitar, but then a new issue began when I came to restring the new B string onto this guitar. And this is the issue I'm talking about. When I was trying to remove um, the last, the stock string that was on it, um, the hole, um, focus, the hole in which to thread the string through is seemingly just a tad too small, as I can't pull this thing uh, any more through that tiny gap. Um, that's as far as I've been able to get it so far, and I can't seem to uh, to get it to go in anymore. I'm gonna have to persevere with this. You can see that the B string is not all the way through the uh, the, the the bridge, the the saddle, the this part of the guitar. I have a headache. I couldn't get that string all the way through. It was just too thick. And that's a problem. So it's kind of just poking out at the end there. I don't know if that's going to have any negative impact on the guitar, but that's pretty disappointing. My guess is that the hole in which you thread the strings through here at the base of the base, <laughs> it just wasn't big enough. It wasn't wide enough to get the thickness of that string through, and as a result, it's it's still kind of poking out of the bottom there. It looks ridiculous, it's bugging me, it's making my OCD go absolutely batch crazy, but it was the best I could do. No matter how much I pulled on that thing, no matter how much I tried to push it through, I could not get it through. And I didn't want to damage the guitar, I certainly didn't want to damage the really expensive bass strings I just purchased. I mean, the Diodarios, so they're good. So it looks like it was restrung poorly. It wasn't my fault. So that was issue number one that I discovered when restringing this guitar. Then I discovered problem number two. 
Now this problem is kind of a big deal to me. So if you've seen the first mini review and unboxing video that I did about this guitar, you may recall the moment that I tried to tune the low E string into E standard and how much of an issue I was having getting it to do that. Need an E. Wow, that's really tight. <laughs> Like, I feel like that's as tight as it's gonna go and I've not even gotten to E yet. That is unbelievable string tension. Okay, so I was going to tune the guitar in E standard, but I've gone for D, drop D. As I was tuning the low E, the tension was becoming pretty insane. I don't think it was gonna quite make it to E standard, so I'm not sure what strings these are. Now, I thought the reason that I was having an issue was down to the string tension, and that's why I couldn't get the key to turn anymore, and it was essentially stuck. Now, I didn't wanna force it anymore in case I damaged the guitar or broke the string or anything like that. And so I opted to leave it in drop D and played it like that. But upon changing the strings, that's when I discovered that there was no additional tension. It wasn't a tension issue. The real issue is this. And I have this little small video that I took whilst changing the strings to show you exactly what I mean. I don't know if you can see this here, but that's the reason why. If you look just here, you'll see the teeth on this cog, on the, on, the, on the wheel here, is completely f for lack of a better word. Um, and that's why it struggles. You get it to a certain point and it just will not twist anymore because it's completely screwed. So whoever put this thing together, like, what are these made out of? Like, seriously, I mean, that is so bad. That's why I couldn't tune it up to the E in the first video that I posted. It had nothing to do with the tension. It was just that the teeth wouldn't move anymore. You can turn it and you can twist it and you can get it to where you want it to go. I do get it into E. Whether or not it will stay there, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's really bad. So these need replacing, or at least the uh, the cogs, the, the teeth, the whatever you want to call them they will need replacing um, because they're clearly just cheap shit that Harley Benson think is acceptable to throw on their guitars. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that they make cheap guitars so they're probably gonna be using very, very cheap stuff, but you still want to have a fully functional bass guitar or any guitar that you've bought from them and not have to replace parts, you know, less than a week after owning it. So that's pretty bad. So yeah, the teeth on this thing right here I'll come and show you again. You can see, I don't know if you can see, I hope you can see this, I'll find out when I come to edit it, but the teeth on this are absolutely ruined. It's obviously piss poor. When you're turning this tuning key and it gets to the point where those teeth are completely screwed, this thing becomes so stiff and tight, you honest to God feel like you're gonna break it the second you try and, 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 and turn it. It's horrible. The keys, they feel so flimsy as well. I feel like I could bend these with just two fingers if I really wanted to do that. The build quality, not that great. Now I'm not here to shit on Harley Benton. And I'm not saying that this is gonna be the result of your guitar if you ever bought one of these. This is just my experience so far and my opinion on the build of this guitar. Now, of course you could argue that the guitar was cheaply made. It's an affordable guitar. Don't get me wrong, I'm not naive here. I wasn't expecting a Fender-like guitar or a Paul Reed Smith or an Ibanez or anything that's gonna have incredible build quality for more money, but I don't know. I just, I think I was just expecting a little better at least. They even stuck a QC Pass sticker right next to the very gear that's completely fucked. Like, who actually quality controlled this guitar? Well, I can tell you because right here, um, according to Toman, Toman, Thoman, Thoman, this company, it says that it was checked by 2562. So whoever you are, 2562, I think that's 2562, you're an idiot. Apparently these guitars are QC'd, quality control checked, but <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I, don't, I don't think it was. At least not very well, not very thorough. And on this tag right here from Harley Benson, this even has a QC stamp on it, or what's, there's a, there's a QC stamp on that, and yeah, mm -mm. I would seriously question Harley Benson's quality control. 
But again, this is just my experience. This is just my opinion. It's not to say it's gonna be the same with every single guitar that they ship out. In the grand scheme of things, it's not exactly a deal breaker. It's not exactly the end of the world. I could probably replace these myself and, and make it better. But I guess the point I'm making is I shouldn't have to do that. But again, as the old expression goes, you get what you pay for. So am I completely disappointed in this guitar? No. Am I ever gonna buy a Harley Benson guitar again? Possibly. I think what a lot of it comes down to is I'm mostly just disappointed in the quality control. They've slapped the labels on there to say that it was checked, but I seriously question that. I mean, when this guitar was being strung, did they not notice that this was an issue? And if they did, did they just go, yeah, f it. Like, this is, this is not good. Like, of all of the functioning parts of a guitar, you, you want to make sure that these work and do their job. Even when they're cheaply made, you, you still need this to be sturdy enough that it's not going to completely screw it up. Again, it's not the end of the world. I got what I paid for. I paid 111 pounds for this guitar. And again, I wasn't expecting a Fender build or a PRS or an Ibanez or a Rickenbacker. I wasn't expecting the most amazing guitar in the world for the price that I paid for it, but I was still expecting a certain amount of quality. It didn't make me think to myself that I just wasted my money. But I don't know, maybe it'll be a fun little project where I can renovate this thing and make it better. Maybe, if I can be bothered. As for the playability, well... As far as the guitar goes from a playability standpoint, I still kind of like it. I have noticed that when I'm recording with this guitar that it records a lot quieter than the Diamond Series Schecter that I've been using. Now these are really the only two main issues that I've discovered. The string issue and the hole not being big enough. <laughs> and of course this gear that is absolutely ruined. And that's me putting it politely this time. It's still not a bad guitar, but if I were to rate it out of 10, Honestly, as an honest review, I would give this guitar a four. So this has been the unofficial part two to the Harley Benton MB5 five string bass guitar. So now I ask the question to you guys, do you own any Harley Benson guitars? Maybe you own this one, maybe you own a different one. And what issues, if any, have you discovered since your purchase? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it would be interesting to hear from you. Now again, I'm not saying that this is gonna be the state of the guitar that you receive if you were to buy one. This has just been my experience. This has just been how this guitar has been for me. Perhaps it was different for you. Perhaps yours was amazing. Let me know, I wanna hear from you. So all in all, it's not exactly been a flawless purchase. And if anybody who works for Harley Benson is watching this, seriously, and of course, I hope you liked this little mini unofficial part two video to the Harley Benson MB5. Well, thank you for watching this video and thank you for listening to me bitch and moan about this guitar. I've got more content coming, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Sick.